All right, so the class voted, and Wonder was one of the two that was tied on, so I'm going to start with this, and we'll get on to Diary of a Wimpy Kid once it comes in the mail. All right? So the chapters are actually really short. They're not, like, chapter one, chapter two. They just have a title and um, really a couple pages, so I'm probably going to read a couple at a time, but I'll let you know between each chapter, okay? So Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Ordinary. I don't know... I I know I'm not an ordinary 10-year-old kid. I mean, sure, I do ordinary things. I eat ice cream. I ride my bike. I play ball. I have an Xbox. Stuff like that makes me ordinary, I guess. And I feel ordinary. Inside. But I know ordinary kids don't make other ordinary kids run away screaming in playgrounds. I know ordinary kids don't get stared at wherever they go. If I find a magic lamp and I had, could have one wish, I would wish that I had a normal face and that no one ever noticed. I would wish I could walk down the street without people seeing me and then doing that look-away thing. Here's what I think. The only reason I'm not ordinary is that no one else sees me that way. But I'm kind of used to, used to how I look by now. I know how to pretend I don't see the faces people make. We've all gotten pretty good at that sort of thing. Me, Mom, Dad, and Via. Actually, I take that back. Via's not so good at it. She can get really annoyed when people do something rude. Like, for instance, one time in the playground, some older kids made some noises. I don't even know what the noises were exactly because I didn't hear them myself. But Via heard and she just started yelling at the kids. That's the way she is. I'm not that way. Via doesn't see me as ordinary. She says she does, but if I were ordinary, she wouldn't feel like she needs to protect me so much. And Mom and Dad don't see me as ordinary either. They see me as extraordinary. I think the only person in the world who thinks, who realizes how ordinary I am is me. My name is August, by the way. I won't describe what I look like. Whatever you're thinking, it's probably worse. Why I didn't go to school. Next week I start fifth grade. Since I've never had been to a real school before, I'm pretty much totally and completely petrified. People think I haven't gone to school because of the way I look, but it's not that. It's because of all the surgeries I've had. 27 since I was born. The bigger ones happened before I was even four years old. So I don't remember those, but I've had two or three surgeries every year since then, some big, some small, and because I'm little for my age and I've had some other medical mysteries the doctors never figured out, I used to get sick a lot. And that's why my parents decided it, were better, it would be better if I didn't go to school. I'm much stronger now, though. The last surgery I had was eight months ago, and I probably won't have to have any more for a couple of years. Mom homeschools me. She used to be a children's book illustrator. She draws great fairies and mermaids. Her boy stuff isn't so hot, though. She once tried to draw me a Darth Vader, but it ended up looking like some weird mushroom-shaped robot. I haven't seen her draw anything in a long time. I think she's just too busy taking care of me and Via. I can't say I always wanted to go to school, because that wouldn't exactly be true. What I wanted was to go to school, but only if I could be like every other kid going to school. Have lots of friends and hang out after school and stuff like that. I have a few really good friends now. Christopher is my best friend, followed by Zachary and Alex. We've known each other since we were babies. And since they've always known me the way I am, they're used to me. When we were little, we used to have playdates all the time. But then Christopher moved to Bridgeport in Connecticut. That's more than an hour away from where I live in North River Heights, which is the tip top of Manhattan. And Zachary and Alex started going to school. It's funny, even though Christopher's the one who moved away, I can still see him more than I see Zachary and Alex. They have all these new friends now. If we bump into each other on the street, they're still nice to me, though. They always say hello. I have other friends, too, but not as good as Christopher and Zach and Alex were. For instance, Zach and Alex always invited me to their birthday parties when they were little, but Joel and Amon and Gabe never did. Emma invited me once, but I haven't seen her in a long time. And of course, I always go to Christopher's party. Maybe I'm making too big a deal about birthday parties. Section 3. How I Came to Life. I like when Mom tells this story because it makes me laugh so much. It's not funny in the way a joke is funny, but when Mom tells it, V and I just start cracking up. So when I was in my mom's stomach, no one had any idea I would come out looking the way I did. Mom had had Via four years before, and that had been such a walk in the park, Mom's expression, that there was no reason to run any special tests. About two months after I was born, the doctors realized that there was something wrong with my face, but they didn't think it was going to be bad. 
I told mom and dad that I had a cleft palate and some other stuff going on. They called it small anomalies. There were two nurses in the, in the delivery room the night I was born. One was very nice and sweet. The other one, mom said, did not seem nice or sweet at all. She had very big arms, and here comes the funny part. She kept farting. Like she'd bring mom some ice chips and then fart. She'd check mom's blood pressure and fart. Mom says it was unbelievable because the nurse never even said excuse me. Meanwhile, mom's regular doctor wasn't on duty that night, so mom got stuck with this cranky kid doctor she and dad nicknamed Juji after some old TV show or something. But they didn't actually call him that to his face. The mom says that even though everyone in the room was kind of grumpy, dad kept making her laugh all night long. When I came out of mom's stomach, she said the whole room got very quiet. Mom didn't even get a chance to look at me because the nice nurse immediately rushed me out of the room. Dad was in such a hurry to follow that he dropped the video camera, which broke into a million pieces. And then Mom got very upset and tried to get out of bed to see what they were, where they were going. But the farting nurse put her big arms on Mom and kept her in the bed. They were practically fighting because Mom was hysterical and the farting nurse was yelling at her to stay calm. And then they were both screaming for the doctor. But guess what? He had fainted right on the floor. So when the farting nurse saw what, that he had fainted, she started pushing him with her foot to get him to wake up, yelling at him the whole time, What kind of doctor are you? What kind of doctor are you? Get up! Get up! And then all of a sudden, she let one of the biggest, loudest, smelliest farts of, in history out. Mom thinks it was after the fart that finally woke the doctor up. Anyway, when Mom tells the story, she acts out all the funny parts, including the farting noises, and it is so, 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 so funny. Mom says the farting nurse turned out to be a very nice woman. She stayed with Mom the whole time, didn't leave her side even when Dad came back, and the doctors told him how sick I was. Mom remembers exactly what the nurse whispered in her ear when the doctor told her I probably wouldn't live through the night. Everyone born to God overcometh the world. And the next day after I had lived through the night, it was that nurse who held Mom's hand when they brought her to meet me for the first time. Mom says by then they had told her about me. She had been preparing herself for the seeing of me. But she says that when she looked down into my tiny mushed up face for the first time, all she could see was how pretty my eyes were. Mom is beautiful, by the way, and Dad is handsome. V is pretty, in case you were wondering.